This is a big one for Penn State football fans. A massive commitment for the Nittany Lions in this cycle. Sean Fitz, our recruiting insider, here to break it all down for you. So, Sean, let's get right to it. What's happening with the Nittany Lions? Been waiting for this one for a long time. Liam Andrews is a Nittany Lion. He announced for Penn State on Friday late morning. A uh, big, big pickup for Penn State. This is a guy that I've circled for a long time as the top guy in the class. This is a guy that can take your class from great to elite, from whatever level you want to talk about Penn State's class being to another to the next, whatever that was. So if they just done him, that would have been quite bad. But uh, top 100 guy by On3 and the On3 industry rankings, uh, now rated as an athlete. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, something that played into this as well, but man, he's a good one. He is a good one. Both sides of the ball, offensive line, defensive line, offensive tackle, defensive end, defensive tackle. Uh, he's just got, it was, he, he's oozing with potential on both sides. One of my favorite prospects in the class, very few guys. And I'm talking about just on one hand, counting on one hand. I feel this way about in, in terms of a prospect. This is a, this is a really good one for Penn state. Yeah, I came a long way around on Liam Andrews after watching him at first hearing. Here's the next uh, offensive tackle prospect standing at about six foot four. Um, and then, like, you watch the film, you watch what he's able to do, and you just your, your jaw drops a little bit in terms of athleticism and all those things we can get into in just a little bit uh, when we look at the film. Uh, this is the this is the fun part, Fitz, where uh, normally I like to go through the recruiting story and how Penn State and the relationship is built. This one very close to the chest from Liam Andrews. But what do you know and what can you share with us about uh, the relationship between the two sides and how it developed over time? Well, let's go back to the start. Penn State offered last spring. Uh, they had him on campus for camp, and he was fantastic at camp. Uh, did the uh, was there was not working at the time, but went out and checked it out. He was playing tackle guard. He was up there with Alex Birchmeyer, with Javen Williams, with Anthony Donka. Uh, Cooper Cousins was there, so and he was right there with him. Like he was, he was maybe the top performer if you account in his youth and things like that. He was there was a lot to like there as an offensive lineman. Things kind of go along. Um, he, he, you know, he had Penn State on his list, but he came into, uh, he, he, excuse me, came to the Michigan State game uh, in November. Things kind of seemed like they faded away after that a little bit. Um, it was uh, he went out and saw several schools in January. Um, we we started our deep dive series. He's one of the first guys that we did our deep dive series on, and after that, got some feedback that maybe Penn State's not really as far in the mix as we thought that that they were. He went out and saw other schools and kind of the flip side of William Satterwhite, the offensive lineman that just uh, committed to Tennessee, kind of came back like he came back home, checked out the blue white game, came for his official visit in, in early June. It seemed like Penn State was far and away the leader um, at that point coming out of his his uh, uh, his official visit. He doesn't talk much. He didn't talk much about the process. I don't think he cared much for the process, which I, that's everybody's prerogative. Um, but yeah. then he went, saw Wisconsin, who was the first school to offer him as a defensive lineman, which was very big for him. And then he went and saw South Carolina. I think he liked South Carolina a lot more than he thought he would like South Carolina. That's what made it so tight down the stretch. But Penn State, those relationships with Phil Troutwine, with Dion Barnes, Stacey Collins, his area recruiter, just it was a total team effort for Penn State. Um, and for them to land him, get him across the line, I, I don't really think I can lay out how big of a, a, of a win this is for Penn State. And yes, you're going to look at that and say, is a kid in the Northeast, a kid Penn State should get. But this kid had offers from pretty much everywhere. Uh, yeah. Really, really good prospects. So that's kind of where that goes. Uh, I, I kind of skipped a giant step in there in that Penn State originally recruited him as an offensive lineman. Right. They made that change, I believe, April-ish, right around the time the Blue-White game came around. They said, hey, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take you as a defensive lineman. That's fine. <laughs> I'll take you as a jumbo athlete. Whatever you, whatever you want to call yourself, we're going to take you as that. And, and yeah. I think you can play on the defensive line, which is, I think is probably the next thing you're going to get into here. Yeah, that that's what I wanted to ask about that transition. We've seen, and by the way, just to kind of reinforce what you're talking about, there's been a lot of really good top level, maybe some of the top players in the nation at the offensive line coming out of Massachusetts recently, but those guys have national offers. Penn State hasn't been able to snag one of those guys, and I know that we're talking about an athlete here, not specifically an offensive lineman, but this is a big step for Penn State in their recruiting and, and getting Liam Andrews, as, as you mentioned, how important he is to this class and to the building efforts, but that conversation of offensive, defensive line, can you shed any more light on uh, the transition process of Penn State recruiting him from one to the other and, you know, the, the preferences there. I, I think it came out of his junior season. Uh, he, you know, he's a two-way player, which yeah, is very hard to to be a two-way player and be as effective as he was. 
Um, but just he, he was a game wrecker on the defensive line. I think he he got a taste for it. And sometimes when you you get sacks, when you get tackles for loss, when you feel that kind of rush, it's a little bit different than playing on the offensive line when you don't get recognized for that kind of stuff. So he came out of his junior season and it seemed like that he was going to be, you know, dictating which uh, which direction his recruitment went in by saying, hey, I want to be a defensive lineman. Give me a shot at defensive. Lineman. I don't think this is a guy that's going into it saying, you know what, if I'm if I'm not a defensive lineman, like for the entire career, I'm, I'm not going to consider you. I think this is a guy that he still might be open to offensive. Line. I think he knows how, how high his ceiling is on the offensive line. But this is a guy that wants a chance at defensive line. He's good enough to do that just from talking to people, not just at Penn State, but at other schools that were recruiting him. I think he's a draftable player as a defensive lineman. I think he's a high round pick as an offensive lineman, but I think he's a draftable player as a defensive lineman. So I think that that's really what dictated it. Like I said, Wisconsin was the first school to, to tell him to give him the green light and say, we, we want you as a defensive lineman. That's something that stuck with him for a long, long time. Went out and visited Wisconsin. I don't know that it was what he was looking for, but you know, he wanted to visit Florida. Florida, he, he found out back channel Florida that uh, they wanted to bring him in as an offensive lineman, but also tell him he was going to be a defensive lineman. You know, he wasn't crazy about that, as, as most guys wouldn't be. So uh, I think that's kind of how that those things came together. Um, Penn State uh, got everybody on board. Like I said, he's he's had conversations with Troutwine from the start. But yeah. Deion Barnes was a big part of this late coming in, uh, sort of uh, assuring him that he had a spot on his defensive line. I think that the, we've talked about this before with some players where they're going to get a chance to start their career at one position, but we're all pretty confident they're going to end up at a different one. But when you look at Liam Andrews, I, I think he's going to have so much success at defensive tackle that I don't know that you're going to move him. Uh, they, that, you know, the the ceiling and everything on, on the offensive side of the ball, you, you can't deny that stuff, but you look at what he brings to the table, length. Uh, those massive 33-plus-inch arms, great hand size, athleticism off the, the ball, great first step, explosive movement skills. Um, there's nothing he's really lacking in terms of tools you would want to have at the position. Uh, maybe a little bit more consistent pad level, but I'm not concerned about that when you're an unblockable defensive lineman, which is what you saw a lot on film. And again, you know, Massachusetts and, and the level of play and level of competition that he's got and the level of exposure, honestly, in that area, maybe not everything you want to see, like he's dominating every single rep, but he's also dominating every single rep. So, I, you know, I, I have a lot of confidence that he's one of the best Penn State defensive tackle prospects that uh, they've recruited in, in quite some time. Fitz, where would, uh, not to throw you off here, but I was trying to think of this before the show. I can't think of the last Penn State defensive tackle prospect that had this much potential. P.J. Mustfer comes to mind, but I don't think uh, Mustfer was as explosive as this. How far back do you have to go before you recollect a guy that had this combination of skills um, for alignment? Boy, that's tough because um, you definitely did throw me off. I mean, you you look at a guy like Zane Durant and he's got the explosion and and things like that, but he's also 6'1". I mean, Liam Andrews is pushing 6'5". He's over 275. You mentioned over 33-inch arms. He's got nearly 35-inch arms. I mean, this guy is – he's long. Like, there's a reason – Penn State, and and we had him at, at at on three ranked as an interior offensive line prospect. We saw him at guard. You know, you know, he's bigger than we thought he was. Like his legitimate numbers are are bigger than we thought he was. So he's got that kind of length, and he's got that kind of explosion. Uh, I don't know, man. It's it's so tough to think on my feet about that one because uh, you know Penn State's defensive tackle recruiting has kind of been all over the map, and and yeah. sometimes you get guys like a Zane Durant with the explosion without size. Sometimes you guys, you get guys with the size like PJ Mustafer without, you know, the, the huge explosion. So uh looks to be some sort of total package in terms of this. And you don't want to throw too much on him because he does still have a lot to learn in terms of mm. hand usage and pad level and all that stuff. But he also won't be playing every snap both ways. And, uh, and, and kind of what you said about uh, Massachusetts, the exposure up there has gotten much, much bigger. I mean, they, they've had showcases and things like that where that became a spot where college coaches had to go. Uh, you know, Penn State's recruited a bunch of guys from Cheshire, uh, Dexter School, you know, just a bunch of schools, Avon Old Farms. Uh, you know, th there's a bunch of different schools that have sort of blossomed in that post-grad sort of way, but not not, not so much for everybody. So um, bringing in Andrews, uh, I mean, I, I can't say enough one of if not my favorite player in the class because he's so versatile and like this is one of those guys where if it doesn't work out at defensive tackle hey he's your top target he was your top target at offensive tackle too so yeah. that's a, that's a nice little fallback to have yeah i think it, it shores up that side of the ball when you look at the, the fact they missed on some guys late at the offensive tackle position 
putting a pin in that for his career, but it also solves the, the biggest gap that they've had, which is that defensive tackle, finding a guy with elite traits. The guy that came to mind, and I don't think this is necessarily a great comparison because he's actually got better reach, better length than a guy like Brian Brissy, who we saw as far as six foot six, big guy, had great movement skills, but I don't know that he had like the 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 ability to use his hands the same way. And, and that's kind of the mold of player where you've got a, a, just... I get too excited about these guys because when I'm looking at a player and I'm looking at, okay, what do they do? Where are the deficiencies? Where maybe are are the fatal flaws? I, I can't really find anything with Liam Andrews that is an obvious, okay, that's going to be an issue for him. It's just going to be about growth and development. And now that I've overhyped him, Fitz, is he a guy that can contribute early in his career? Because I know that that's something Penn State fans, again, are going to be wondering about when it comes to a defensive tackle who is a highly rated recruit and the need at that position that we have uh, pinpointed for several off seasons. Well, I mean, you just compared him to the number one prospect out of his class and uh, a guy that uh, was fairly well regarded in the draft. Um, so I'll, I'll let you have that one. Uh, yeah, I think he's a guy that, that can profile as an early contributor. It's so tough at defensive tackle. And and yeah. and he might be a guy, and I know he's big at 275, but might be a guy that you start out as a five tech, as, a, as an end um, that you can eventually move down. He's going to go. He's going to he's going to make that transition that so many high school guys go from being huge and being a guy that looks like, you know, a man amongst boys to a, being a guy that maybe looks skinny by the time he gets here. So it'll be interesting to see where he's at uh, when he gets to Penn State. He's going to enroll in January. So uh, he's he's got a lot of potential. Uh, I don't want to throw the, the cart in front of the horse and say he's going to be in the rotation next year. Um, but you, you look at what he does on film. He does it so well. Um, physical kid. Um, I remember last year when I was watching him at camp. He put a little extra into it, and that's what you like to see. You know, he, he reminded me a little bit of watching Landon Tangwall at camp. Is uh, you know mm -hmm. just get getting a little bit extra. You know, so uh, that's uh, that's really what you want to see out of a guy that's going to play on the interior, whether it's on the offensive line or excuse me on the defensive line, on the offensive line at tackle. So uh, there's a lot going for Liam Andrews here. Penn State gets an elite lineman. We'll just say lineman and uh, see how it plays out. Defensive tackle, defensive end to start. Maybe an offensive tackle in the future. Who knows? But they got a guy that has all the tools to be great at any of those positions in Liam Andrews. Fitz, uh, just a, about 40 seconds here. What do you got for us heading out, looking forward in, in the class and, and with all of this situation heading into the end of July? Well, we may see you before long. Uh, T.A. Cunningham set to announce at 1.30 uh, on Saturday afternoon. Um, and that'll be interesting to see uh, which direction they go. The Lash Bash, of course, next week. And we put in a, a list up on uh, bluewhiteillustrated.com yesterday um, that that was something that uh, you know was, was very popular. But uh, we'll see what happens from there. Jalen Harvey's still out on the board. Penn State still wants some receivers. And then I think you reshuffle and you figure out what's uh, what's next, whether that's an outside linebacker or more, another offensive tackle, things like that. Um, so there, there's a lot to come in this cycle. Very, I think the cycle, you can almost break it in two. You've got all these guys that have decided coming out of their summer visits, and then you're going to figure out in the fall if, if, if flip season is going to be good for Penn State. So um, it's, a, it, it's a good time to follow because I think there's a lot of interesting thing, things happening in addition to looking forward uh, to the 25s and 26s that will be here for the Lash Bash next weekend. You heard the man subscribe to bluewhiteillustrated.com 25% off right now. If you want to go and sign up, get that insider information, subscribe here on the YouTube channel and enable notifications or like the video, any of the above I'll be happy with. Uh, that's what going to do it here for Liam Andrews committing to the Nittany Lions. And as Fitz said, stay tuned. There could be more to come from Penn State football recruiting. I'm Thomas Reinkar. He's Sean Fitz. We'll talk to you next time.